Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to start a new topic, which is on Y5. Okay, Y5 is also known as 802.11 standard. This video, I'm going to explain why there is a need to move from Y55 to Y56. Basically, Y55 has been serving us well. However, there is one big issue of Y55. When the network becomes congested, this Y55 probably cannot serve us as well as it actually do. So basically, in this video, I'm going to explain the motivation okay, why we need to move from Y55 to Y56. The key reason of Y56 is mainly used to combat the issue when the network become congested. So this will be the objective of this video. I'm going to explain to you how Wi-Fi 6 actually resolved the issue of congested network. This will be the part one series discussion on Wi-Fi. I believe that I'm going to do more discussion on Wi-Fi. So guys, if you're keen to know more about Wi-Fi, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on Wi-Fi. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. When more people like this video, then definitely this video will have a higher chances to reach out a larger audience. So guys, help me by like this video. If you are new to this channel, again, I urge you to support this channel by subscribe to this channel. Guys, also please give me some comment so that I know how to improve the quality of this channel. Or maybe you guys have some certain so-called discussion that you guys are keen to listen. Please let me know through the comment so that I can work towards your needs. Last but not least, please remember to turn on your notification bell so that in the future, you will be able to receive notification from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your song support. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's quickly understand what is actually Wi-Fi 5 and also Wi-Fi 6. Okay, Wi-Fi has undergo five major releases okay, from Wi-Fi 1 all the way to Wi-Fi 5. Okay, the first release is at 1999. Wi-Fi 1 through wave Wi-Fi 5 can be seen as incremental improvement. Okay, so why does they mention that it's just a very small incremental improvement? Okay, for example, from Wi-Fi 1 all the way to Wi-Fi 5, okay, the key issue that they actually want to resolve will be just the speed or maybe known as throughput or data rate. So in short, Wi-Fi 1 all the way to Wi-Fi 5, they basically resolve okay, by increasing the throughput, increasing the data rate okay, as compared to the original 802.11 standard. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 is the first Wi-Fi standard that is engineering specifically for a world where everything is constantly connected. Okay, so over this word here, you know that Wi-Fi 6 is basically designed so that the device will be continuous connected to the Wi-Fi router, for example. Okay, they also assume that upload and download speed need to be symmetric. Okay, so basically this is what it's all about on Wi-Fi 6. Basically, the device will be constantly connected to the router, for example. And also we assume that the upload and download speed they need to be symmetric, which means that they allocate equal time for both upload and also download. Let's take a look on the older version. Okay, for example, okay, let's talk about Wi-Fi 5. Okay, basically, they assume okay, the network connectivity is infrequent, okay, which means that, okay, for example, at that time when we actually do not use the router, maybe okay, most of the time we will turn off the router. Basically, in short, the connectivity is infrequent, okay, which means that the device does not really require to connect to the internet 24-7. And basically, the usage will be on casual usage, okay, which means that it's not that essential to have this 
continuous connection. As and when, when we want to serve the internet, then we will use this Wi-Fi 5, for example, okay, to connect to the internet. Okay, we also expecting okay, for this older version of Wi-Fi, okay, significantly there will be more download of data rather than upload. Okay, I guess you know in the old days, okay, we basically download, for example, document to read. We download a movie to see. Okay, maybe I should say that in the old days, we seldom do any upload. However, you just need to take a look on today's youngster. They actually do a lot of upload also. They basically do a lot of content and they basically upload the content to social media to share with their friend. So basically, in short, Wi-Fi 6 is basically customized to design. Okay, basically, we also upload and also download. In short, the speed for upload and download, they are actually symmetric. But for Wi-Fi 5, older generation of Wi-Fi, basically concentrate a little bit more on download rather than upload. Okay, the terminology Wi-Fi 6 is new to the technology. Okay, recently, the Wi-Fi Alliance issued the new names for Wi-Fi to simplify the understanding for those that are not really tech savvy. In short, Wi-Fi Alliance just want to meet laymen to understand the different Wi-Fi standard. Okay, for example, currently, we are actually at Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 7 will be the future, and Wi-Fi 1 all the way to Wi-Fi 5 is actually what we call the past. So basically, in short, Wi-Fi Alliance made this easy for any person to understand the Wi-Fi standard. Okay, with this release, okay, Wi-Fi 6 is referred as IEEE standard 802.11 AX. Okay, basically for Wi-Fi 6 will be called an AX standard. Okay, Wi-Fi 5 will be called an AC 802.11 AC. While in the future, Wi-Fi 7 is called as 802.11 BE standard. Okay, so over here, I give you a quick introduction on Wi-Fi 5 and also Wi-Fi 6. Okay, this further enhance the history, the present, and maybe in the future. Okay, as I share with you, okay, Wi-Fi 7 is probably in the future. Okay, but at this moment, actually, there are some key development on Wi-Fi 7. Maybe on the next video, I will do a very quick discussion on Wi-Fi 7. But in short, okay, maybe you can imagine that Wi-Fi 7 okay, is not that near and also not that far. Okay, so basically, this Wi-Fi 7 probably will become common okay, maybe in another half to one year time. Okay, over here, you can see that basically, as I told you earlier on, okay, on this column here, basically will be the throughput or maximum data rate. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, for Wi-Fi 1 all the way to Wi-Fi 5, Okay, you can see that the emphasis is how to increase the throughput or the data rate. Okay, maybe except generation 2 to 3, okay, there is no emphasis on increasing the data rate. As you can see that basically they change the frequency, which I will explain later on. But over here, it's quite obvious that throughout the generation of Wi-Fi, the key thing that they actually want to improve is actually the speed, okay, which is the throughput or data rate. As you can see that the amount of data so-called can be sent can actually increase drastically. Okay, this column here actually share the frequency. In the early days, basically they use 2.4. Okay, remember when you actually has a lower frequency, it can serve a longer range. So basically Wi-Fi 1 okay, basically has been using okay, by having a low frequency. Okay, the key motivation for Wi-Fi 1 to move to Wi-Fi 2 Okay, basically, you can see that the frequency change. Okay, once the frequency change, the throughput also increase when you actually move to a higher frequency. As for Wi-Fi 3, you can see that the frequencies went back to 2.4 so that they have effective range. Wi-Fi 4, you can actually see that it actually has two bands, okay, which is 2.4 and also 5 gigahertz. As for Wi-Fi 5, okay, mainly actually call the 5 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz. Now we talk about Wi-Fi 6. Okay, Wi-Fi 6 is basically you can have a combination of 2.4 and also 5 gigahertz. Wi-Fi 6E, okay, this E actually stands for extended. Okay, basically, the introduce of this Wi-Fi 6E is because 
they actually introduced a new frequency spectrum, okay, which is called sub-6. Basically, this sub-6 actually provide another alternative so-called frequency spectrum. Once you provide another alternative frequency spectrum, okay, your throughput will be increased. The number of clients that you can serve also increase. So basically, this is the motivation of Wi-Fi 6E is to move to another frequency band, okay, which is six sub-6 gigahertz. As I mentioned earlier on, okay, the number of users, the number of throughput, everything all increase. In Wi-Fi 7, okay, you can see that again, okay, the key so-called improvement will be a combination of all those three frequencies. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier on, Wi-Fi 7 probably will be in the future. Okay, so these are all the date that they actually start the R&D. Okay, and then you probably will see some prototype of Wi-Fi 7 in the market now. Okay, but like what I mentioned, in terms of worldwide so-called uh, commercialized, it will still have about maybe half or to one year time. Okay, so these are all the IEEE standard which I have illustrated. Okay, I guess you have some idea what I have mentioned earlier on. Okay, so now let me explain okay, why we need to move from Wi-Fi 5 all the way to Wi-Fi 6. Okay, Wi-Fi 5 meet a significant advance in terms of speed, okay, which means that the throughput actually increase or the data rate actually increase when we actually talk about Wi-Fi 5. Yet, it was still designed with legacy assumption. Okay, for example, okay, Wi-Fi 5, often perform well in arenas, in conference, or other venue before the event actually started. However, okay, once the event commenced, okay, the influx of hundred or maybe even thousands of users, they can be posting pictures, they can be doing some tweeting, or engage in other online activities. Okay, this can overwhelm the network, okay, which means that the network become congested. And basically, this makes it a most impractical to use this Wi-Fi 5 anymore. Okay, the issue okay, actually lies not in the Wi-Fi speed. Okay, as 802.11n, okay, and the subsequent change, okay, actually they offer more than enough bandwidth. Okay, rather than the primary channel with Wi-Fi is how it actually manages congestion. Okay, when the network becomes overcrowded, okay, Wi-Fi 5, basically I will use the word saturate and basically they will not be able to respond. Okay, but for Wi-Fi 6, okay, they basically address many of the shortcomings of traditional Wi-Fi by completely redesign how the technology actually function. Basically, they draw the inspiration from the best practice found in LTE or 4G. Okay, they basically make use of this OFDMA network okay, to resolve the issue of network congestion. Okay, so basically, next slide, okay, uh, we will be able to understand a little bit more how Wi-Fi 6 actually resolved the congestion issue. Okay, one of the most significant innovation in LTE was a feature called OFDMA. Okay, OFDMA is ideal for low bandwidth application, and this actually results in better frequency reuse they reduce the latency and also increase efficiency. With the previous version of Wi-Fi, okay, the channel, okay, for example, for Wi-Fi 5, the channel remains busy until data transmission had finished. Okay, so imagine now, okay, think of a line at a retail store okay, with only one cashier. Okay, so there's only one cashier serving the, the customer or the client. So basically what we need to do is we need to queue out Okay, while waiting to check out. Okay, Wi-Fi 5 actually use this multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. Okay, so basically in short, okay, multiple user okay, means that earlier on, I just mentioned about one cashier, but for Wi-Fi 5, they can have multiple cashier and they have this multiple input and multiple output. They basically was introduced to accommodate more user. Okay, so for Wi-Fi 5, they are actually used to accommodate more users. However, okay, it only offer a marginal improvement, okay, which means that the improvement is just a little bit okay, with Wi-Fi 5. Okay, so basically, they expand this one cashier to multiple users. In short, this is what Wi-Fi 2 
Wi-Fi 5 do basically from one cashier, they actually become multiple user. Okay, I will explain a little bit more okay, on the next few slides. Okay, continue the store analogy. Okay, basically that use this multiple user, multiple input and multiple output. Okay, means there can be four cashier and four line. Okay, so imagine that if you can have four cashier, okay, definitely they can serve more customer as compared to one cashier. Remember, okay, early on I have mentioned, okay, basically before so-called Wi-Fi 5, they basically has only one cashier, for example, and there is only one line queuing out. However, for Wi-Fi 5, which is called multiple user. Okay, multiple user means that they can have more than one cashier. For example, we can have four cashier, and because since we have this four cashier, we can have four lines. Okay, but customers still need to wait until the transaction ahead of them is completed and checked up. In short, okay, basically, whoever that is in front of you, okay, you need to wait patiently for your turn. So the customer need to be completely checked out. Then the cashier will consider to serve you. If not, the cashier will still concentrate to serve the customer that is so-called the upfront in the queue. Okay, with OFDMA, each channel is multiplexed into hundreds of smaller chart channels. Okay, I will explain a little bit more on this. Okay, each with a unique frequency. Okay, these signals are then autonomically arranged, allow them to be stacked on top of each other and subsequently demultiplex. Okay, so basically this is a little bit idea about Wi-Fi 5, okay, which is multiple user. As I mentioned earlier on, instead of one cashier, let's say there are four cashier and you you actually have four lines. Once you have this, you can imagine that definitely your throughput will be multiplied by four, for example, as compared to one cashier. Earlier on, I have shared with you, okay, basically, they don't have this multiple user, which means that there is only one cashier and basically one line. But with this multiple user for Wi-Fi 5, basically, for example, we can have up to four cashier and definitely we can also have four lines of queue. Okay, so if this video okay, allows you to learn something, okay, please consider to like and also subscribe if you are new to this channel. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, in a store analogies, okay, imagine this. So this is for Wi-Fi 6. Okay, I'm going to explain how Wi-Fi 6 actually resolve the congestion issue. Okay, we use back the store analogy. Okay, basically imagine a customer handle multiple customer in the following way. Okay, so basically there will be just one cashier. I'm going to illustrate how this one cashier can actually take care of multiple customer. Okay, for example, the customer one can okay, start to write a check, okay, which hold up the line. Okay, with OFDMA, the cashier can start right ringing up okay, customer to order while customer one is writing up the check. Okay, for example, customer one okay, basically want to meet payment. So basically, they, they actually want to use check to meet the payment, for example. And basically, because uh, when you actually write a check, it actually takes some time. So therefore, the cashier can actually ring up for customer two to come forward to serve it, while customer one still continue to write up the check. Okay, so next for this case here, if customer two realize that he or she also forgotten an item, okay, and therefore need to exit the line, okay, the cashier can then start to deal with customer three. Over here, you can see that customer one write a check, customer two forgotten something and need to exit the queue to make the payment. And then basically the cashier can actually ring up to serve the customer tree. Okay, the exact number of clients that can be transmitted simultaneously is depend on channel width and also the number of resource you need. Okay, so in terms of number of clients that we actually can serve, okay, simultaneously is actually depend on two factors. One is actually on the channel width, another one will be the number of resource you need. Okay, on the next slide, I will explain this a little bit more. Okay, which are the number of sub-channel create. Okay, a Wi-Fi 6 access point okay, can designate 26, 52, 106, 242, 484, and 966 sub-career as illustrated on this table here. Okay, let's start some understanding of this table here. So these are so-called the number of sub-carrier. Okay, these are all the channel. 
Okay, you can configure the Wi-Fi 6 either have this 20 megahertz channel, this 40 megahertz channel, this 80 megahertz channel, or maybe configure as 160 megahertz channel. Okay, so on the next video, I will explain a little bit more on this channel, but this video, okay, I'm going to explain why we need to move from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 in order to resolve the congestion issue. Okay, let's take a look on these two diagrams here. Okay, for example, this is Wi-Fi 5. Okay, so this is Wi-Fi 5. For example, if you look over here, okay, so these are so-called the numbers of queue. For example, let's say, okay, Wi-Fi 5 having this sub career 26. Okay, so basically, under this 20 megahertz channel, okay, they actually has this sub career of 26. Okay, which means that I actually has 26 cashier. Can you imagine? Definitely, I cannot draw 26 cashier, but imagine okay, you can actually has 26 cashier, okay, as I illustrate over here, and they basically have this 20 megahertz channel, okay, which means that, okay, which means that these are all 20 megahertz of channel. Okay, imagine, let's say uh, there are 26 of that, and the total of 26 of them actually form a channel. Okay, so basically, this is what it means uh, on this line here. And basically, they can serve, for example, line, nine, client, nine client. Okay, so basically, this is for Wi-Fi 6. Okay, for Wi-Fi 5, they basically can only serve one particular client. So basically, this is an issue of Wi-Fi 5. You can imagine that, for example, this client actually jam up this so-called cashier. Then the cashier will not be able to move on to the second client. This will be completely jammed. And you actually so-called handicapped by one sub-carrier for this Wi-Fi 5. Okay, if let's say this cashier somehow jam up and you have this issue. Okay, early on, I have mentioned the so-called the important thing about Wi-Fi 6. Okay, so let's understand this Wi-Fi 6 based on this line here. Okay, for example, I'm going to select this 20 megahertz of channel and I'm going to have sub-carrier 26. Okay, so which means that okay, I can actually have this 26 cashier over here. I can have 26 cashier here. Okay, what is this so-called the nine client? Okay, so over here you can see that I actually has this four client. Okay, but uh on the table is actually mentioned nine client. Okay, which means that one cashier can simultaneously serve nine client. Okay, if okay, if you have this sub career 26 and if you have this 20 megahertz channel, you actually one shot can serve nine client okay which is over here you can serve up to nine client okay so if you still remember what i have mentioned about wi-fi 6 okay wi-fi 6 here mentioned that for example customer one okay want to write a check which hold up the line so the with this ofdma the cashier can actually start to ring up customer two okay while because customer two have forgotten some item he actually exit the line and basically the cashier can ring up to customer three so over here you can see that is basically one cashier sub three client. Okay, but for this kind of complication here, okay, sub career 26 and 20 megahertz channel, it can serve up to nine client. So over here, you can imagine that there will be nine client, which means that one cashier can actually simultaneously serve nine different client. So over here, you can see that this Wi-Fi 6 potentially remove away the issue of network congestion. Okay, for Wi-Fi 5, for example, as I mentioned earlier on, if this client congested the network okay, or can congested this cashier, then this part will be jammed out. And basically, you can only rely on the rest of sub -carrier. However, for this, they will be jammed out and you cannot rely on this anymore. But for Wi-Fi 6, for example, this guy jammed out the so-called the line. Basically, the cashier can ask this guy to move aside while he actually serve the customer to and remember under the configuration of this 26 and 20 megahertz okay i can potentially can have nine customer over here so over here you can imagine how this wi-fi 6 actually solve the issue of congestion let me give you some conclusion okay how wi-fi 6 actually resolve the congestion issue okay from a user perspective Okay, the network was seen much less congested with Wi-Fi 6 than with Wi-Fi 5. Okay, you can see from here, although the queue is also very long, okay, but you can see that 
one cashier can simultaneously serve nine clients. For, for Wi-Fi 5, they can only serve the same one customer. So over here, you can see that the network will be seen much less congested with Wi-Fi 6 as compared to Wi-Fi 5. Another benefit is that 2.4 and 5 megahertz band can be combined. Remember, for Wi-Fi 6, I can actually combine this 2.4 and 5 megahertz. Okay, when you actually combine, you actually have small channel. Once you have more channel, imagine I'm going to have more channel. So basically, this is what we call one channel. Okay, so this is what we call one channel. Okay, so again, if we can have more channel, definitely the speed will increase. The throughput also will be increased. The data rate also increase. Okay, so for Wi-Fi 6 standard also include this 1024 QAM. And basically by encoding this 1024 QAM, this actually allow more data to be transmit per packet. Okay, which means that these are so-called the packet, one packet. So basically with this 1024 QAM encoding, okay, there are more data can be keep inside this one packet. Okay, so basically this is what I have for you guys on the discussion. Okay, why we need to move Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6. In short, okay, Wi-Fi 5 is incapable to work so-called ideally once the network become congested. Okay, over here you can see that Wi-Fi 6 actually has a very in intelligent way to resolve when the network actually become congested. For example, any point of time when the customer actually so-called congest or maybe jam up the queue, okay, the cashier can actually ask them to move one side and actually they can actually call up to the next customer and then they actually can start to serve the next customer. So over here, you can imagine that Wi-Fi 6 will have less congestion issue as compared to Wi-Fi 5. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.